Why does nobody care that Chet Holmgren has proven he is a generational prospect? If Victor Wembanyama did not exist, we would be looking at Chet Holmgren very differently, and while Wemby is of course on his own path to greatness, Chet is right now performing at an all-star level while also playing on the top seed in the Western Conference, while also connecting on turnaround threes at the buzzer to tie games and throwing the ball off the backboard to himself for dunks. This is a 21-year-old center. LeBron James himself Himself has given Chet the ultimate compliment, saying, What makes OKC so good? Chet comes in yep. and yep. it unlocks everything. Yep. How you maximize the offense, yeah. you need Chet on that team. For sure. No question about it. It changes the, dyna the dynamic of everything. So we have a 21 year old who has unlocked the Thunder's offense and finished near the top of almost every important defensive stat this season. Chet helped the Thunder go from 40 wins in 2023 to 57 wins in the number one seed in the Western Conference in 2024. A massive difference, and everyone has hyped up Shea Gilgis Alexander as an MVP candidate, but why has Chet not gotten the love he clearly deserves, while Wemby has been given all the love possible? possible on a 22 win team. Because here's the thing, if we compare Chet and Wemby's base stats, we do find that Wemby outperformed Chet in the box score, but we need to remember LeBron's words. Yep. Chet unlocked OKC's offense and Chet versus Wemby is actually way closer than you might think. Yep. There is a definite argument here. Wemby with the Spurs was on a terrible team. He had free range to shoot whenever he wanted and really do whatever he wanted, as Wemby finished sixth in the entire league in usage percentage for the number 14 team in the West. Chet's usage percentage this season was over 10% lower while his efficiency was much higher for the number one seed. Demanding the question, why are we not valuing wins more? Defensively, we are clearly watching generational prospects emerge from both Chet and and Wemby. Chet finished the season 7th in defensive rating, 6th in defensive win shares, and 2nd in block percentage. Wemby had an even better defensive year, ranking 2nd in defensive rating, 5th in defensive win shares, and 1st in block percentage. However, when it comes to offense, Chet is the one who had a much more effective season. Chet Holmgren's true shooting percentage this season was 63.2%, way above Wemby's 56.5. Chet finished with 4.6 offensive win shares, Wemby finished with minus 0.7. In terms of win shares per 48 minutes, Chet was 20th in the NBA with 0.178, while Wemby had less than half of that with 0.085. We have all wondered, after Wemby's rookie year, what happens when Wemby gets the right team around him? However, that is currently just a hypothetical. In his first season in the league, Chet has shown us that what happens if he has the right team around him is that they are the best team in the regular season in the entire Western Conference. Should we really discount a third? 35 win differential between Chet and Wemby. Shea, again, is being given MVP consideration, but he was first team all NBA last year on a 40 win team. It was the addition of Chet that pushed this team to the next level, all the way to the top of the West. And with this young roster, plus multiple picks to trade, the Thunder are now set up to be a championship contender for the next decade. But guys, before we continue, I am very excited to thank SeatGeek for sponsoring today's video. Because of course, as you already know, the NBA season has been crazy. We've already had some incredible buzzer beaters, some wild on the court moments. Yes, SeatGeek, the place where I personally buy my tickets, which means you may have noticed that currently Drake is on tour. Drake. And luckily, SeatGeek is hooking us up. They're giving us a special deal where no matter what, if you're a new SeatGeek customer or not, you can use code MIKE10 for 10% off any concert you buy on SeatGeek. That's right, code MIKE10 works no matter what. You could have bought a million tickets on SeatGeek before this, Mike 10 is going to get you 10% off your next order. So take out your phone, open the SeatGeek app, add code Mike 10, get 10% off. This is a no brainer to me. That is code Mike 10 for 10% off of your next order. Thank you again to SeatGeek for sponsoring today's video. And now let's get back into that video. So, yes, Victor Wembanyama does look like a future superstar, but I think we can all agree Chet Holmgren is proving right in front of our eyes that he is going to be one of the most important and impactful players in this league for a very long time. And the thing is, before the Wemby hype, Chet was seen as a generational prospect. He was seen as a unicorn type breed. It was the addition of Wemby to the NBA and a freak injury involving LeBron during a pro-am game that slowed down the Chet Holmgren hype train, but every stat we can find points towards Chet being a future star. Now, people love to say Chet is not a true rookie, so let's just go based off of his age. At 21 years old, Chet is one of only seven players in NBA 
history to average over 16 points, 7 rebounds, and 2 blocks per game. Out of these 7 players on this list, Chet's team finished the year with the most wins, and this is nothing new. Chet Holmgren first became known to the public after his performance at Steph Curry's camp, where, as a 7-footer, as Chet would take it directly at Steph in this game at Steph's own camp, blocking him on one end, shooting a three on his face on the other, showing us absolutely zero fear against an NBA superstar while Chet was just a teenager. This tells us Chet's current success in the league is no accident. He has had this mindset for a long time. As a high school senior, Chet was Mr. Basketball USA, Gatorade National Player of the Year, Naismith Prep Player of the Year, you name a big award, Chet won it. He was the number one player in his class and he won the state championship every single year he was in high school, making him the best kind of superstar, one who puts up big numbers and also wins titles. At the time of his high school success, people were split on Chet. Some saw the handles, some saw the three-point shooting and thought of him as a generational prospect, while others thought NBA centers would eat him alive at his current weight. The thing is though, Chet's work ethic and single-minded desire to become great clearly showed at that age. And now that he has become a force in the NBA, it is clearly shown to pay off. There was of course a time though where there was no guarantee that Chet would even make a living playing basketball. Playing for fellow NBA player Jalen Sugg's dad in AAU in 8th grade, Chet was first described as terrible when he joined the team and the trainer assigned to him, Aaron Delaney, would say, I had it planned out. I was going to make him quit. I'm just going to break him today and not waste any more of my time. This could all be hype I needed to see. So Delaney attempted to push Chet to his breaking point, Chet instead shocked Delaney as he never complained even though the trainer's goal was to make him quit basketball. Chet just handled every workout thrown at him and would only ask, what else can I do to become better? This mindset, this desire to become great combined with a freak growth spurt, Chet went from 6 foot 2 to 6 foot 10 between 8th grade and his freshman year of high school, helped Chet to become a player who was described as terrible to a player who was the number one prospect in the entire nation. That is the type of growth and mindset you love to see from someone you are going to bet on to become a future NBA star. Nothing at all was handed to Chet, he worked for everything he has gotten, and as his basketball journey has continued, there has been zero evidence that points to Chet failing. I really am not trying to use the term generational prospect lightly. Everything though has shown us that Chet is a future superstar. At Gonzaga, Chet was a consensus All-American for the number one team in the country as his advanced numbers were off the charts. In the entire NCAA, Chet was 17th in offensive rating, 14th in win shares, 11th in PER, 8th in block percentage, 2nd in box score plus minus, 1st in effective field goal percentage, and 1st in defensive rating. He was, as always, a superstar who takes away nothing from his team, plays his role to perfection, and leads his team to win after win. If you're wondering about the work ethic, his coach Mark Few would say, he, Chet, has a plan and he is a worker, and I know people talk about young kid loves to work or whatever. Talk about the thunder there, they're going to have to physically remove him from the building. I knew that in the recruitment process, but to witness firsthand was really, really impressive. Mark Few is a Hall of Fame coach who has coached a lot of NBA players. It truly feels like we are not giving nearly enough credit to a man who was once so skinny that people thought he would break his bones trying to guard NBA centers, but instead, his relentless work ethic has won out and the stats don't lie. This season, if we do a deep dive into Chet's numbers, we come up with a historic rookie year. In terms of his per 100 stats, only three players in league history, minimum 20 games played, have averaged at least 27 points, 12 rebounds, four assists, and three blocks a game as a rookie. Chet, Victor Wembanyama, and Joel Embiid. If you don't like the rookie tag, we can take a look at a list of 21 year olds who have averaged those stats. Would you look at that? We find just one name, Chet Holmgren. As for per 36 minute stats, minimum 20 games played, only three players have averaged at least 20 points, nine rebounds, three assists, and two blocks per game per 36 minutes. Joel Embiid, Victor Webinyama, and Chet Holmgren. Chet is also the only 21 year old to achieve these per 36 numbers. He did this 
this while transforming his team from a play-in game loser to a 57 win top seed in the west. He did this while still being so skinny that it looks like the wind can blow him away. Once Chet puts on more and more weight, once he gains more experience, the sky is truly the limit for him. And with the Oklahoma City Thunder, we really do have a potential dynasty in play. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you think about Chet down below. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications. That way you never miss a video like this one. Also, if you liked this video, I do think you'll like the Wemby deep dive we just did. That's up in the left corner or in the right corner. Maybe you want to watch the worst recent trade for all 30 NBA teams. If you're already subscribed, thank you so much for supporting. You're awesome. We all know it. And peace.